Hi, Terry Shanefeld here from UAB School of Medicine. In this statistics corner, we're going to talk about confidence intervals, how we interpret and use them. So a study population is just a very small sample of the entire population that has a disease that we're interested in. And this study sample is then used to estimate the effect of the intervention on the larger population with that disease. Now there's uncertainty in using this small sample to estimate to a much larger population. And this uncertainty, uncertainty can then be quantified with p-values and confidence intervals. So let's look at this graphically. So let's say we have two groups in a study. Group A gets our intervention. Group B is our control. The first thing we do is figure out the main effect that we see in the study. And this is a difference in the outcomes. And then we calculate the uncertainty or variance of that main effect. And then we can go down two pathways. One is the determination of p-values, which will be the focus of another video. The other is to calculate 95% confidence intervals around this effect that we see in the study. So this is what's done when we statistically analyze our data. And usually both of these things, both p-values and confidence intervals, are given out by most statistical packages. So let's do an example. Let's say we have a weight loss study. Group A in this study receives the intervention and loses on average about 10 pounds. Group B is a control group who gets nothing and loses an average of 3 pounds. So the main effect in this weight loss program is estimated to be a 7 pound weight loss. And I stress the word estimated because again we do a study to estimate an effect. We can never know the truth because we can't study every single person. We take a small sample so the best we can do is estimate what our effect is. And the true effect of this intervention is not likely to be exactly 7 pounds because of that uncertainty with it that we're using a small sample to estimate from a larger population. So our uncertainty is best represented by a range. And a confidence intervals address that range. So classically we use a 95% confidence interval because of the p-value less than 0.05 being statistically significant. And so the confidence interval in this particular study around that 7 pound weight loss is 2 to 12. And one way to interpret that is that 97% of the time the true effect of the intervention, in this case weight loss intervention, will be within the range from 2 to 12 pounds. So one of the ways I interpret this is that our best guess from this study is a 7 pound weight loss, but our weight loss could be as little as 2 pounds or as great as 12 pounds. That's a sort of a classic interpretation clinically of a confidence interval. Now the formal statistical definition is much more complex. It's the interval computed from the sample data, which, where the study repeated multiple times, would contain the true effect 95% of the time. That's pretty confusing, I think, statistically. I think one way is just to remember it is that this is our best guess from the study, and this is the range within which we can be fairly confident our true value lies. Now the statistical definition, maybe to make it a little bit more clear if we look at it graphically, so there is some truth out there when we do a study and in God or some higher being, whatever you believe in, really knows the effect of our weight loss intervention. And that's the truth. And these, all these little lines represent a hundred studies that are repeated over and over and over again of the same interventions to help people lose weight. And each of these lines is confidence intervals around that. So you can see there's lots of confidence intervals when we re repeat a study over and over again. There's variability in studies. Now there's five of these studies represented by these double X's that the confidence intervals do not include the truth. So that's where that statistical definition of a 95% confidence interval comes from. That 95% of the confidence intervals, if we would repeat a study over and over and over again, would include the truth. Thus, five of them won't. And that's what this diagram tries to show. Now finally I want to finish up with two important, uh, one important concept that there are two factors that influence 95% confidence intervals. One of them is sample size of the study and how spread out the data is. Let's look at sample size first. The more people we study in, in a study, the narrower the confidence interval will be no matter what. The more people we study, the closer we are to representing the entire population with that disease, the more sure we are of our answer. So no matter what, the more people in a study, the narrower the confidence interval will be, the more sure we'll be about our estimate of the effect. Confidence intervals are calculated from standard deviations. Now standard deviations reflect how spread out our data is. And what a standard deviation is, is it, it measures how far each individual measurement is from the mean of that sample, the average of that sample. So the more spread out your data, 
the higher will be the standard deviation, and no matter what, the wider will be the confidence interval. So practically speaking, um, the only thing I can control as a researcher is sample size. The more people I put in my study, the more sure my answer I will be, the narrower will be the confidence interval. I can't really control the spread of the data. Uh, the measurements I get are the measurements I get. This video has helped you understand more about confidence intervals. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the Contact Me section of my blog. Have a great day.